Hey, hello again everyone. Tim here from timscomputerfix.net. Today we're doing a simple power jack replacement on an HP DV4 1430 US. Now this is a relatively easy power jack repair job and I'll just uh, take you step by step on disassembly and reassembly and get the job done. So we'll just remove the battery first and then we'll take off the panel exposing the memory We'll then remove the memory, taking that off, second slot, okay, now we're going to remove the door, this is going to be the panel that's exposing the hard drive, in this case I don't have a hard drive installed, but we'll take off the wireless card also, pull it, then our next panel will actually expose where our power jack is plugged into. Now this is interesting on this model. The power jack is pigtailed to the board, not soldered, so the end connection where the power goes into is exposed through this panel. This allows for easy troubleshooting if you'd like to troubleshoot or test voltage from your power jack to your board. So we're going to try that here. I'm going to show you how to do that here. We have our voltmeter here ready to go. And we're just going to test our power tip first to be sure it has proper voltage. There's 19.8. And in this demonstration, I'm just showing you how easy it would be to test voltage on this laptop if you had a good power jack. So now we're going to test the leads to the board. We're going to test power going to the board. We're going to test the black terminal and the red terminal. The red being the positive, the black being the negative. The yellow and the white are both for signals. So we just take our post from our voltmeter, put it on the red terminal, put our black on the black terminal, and with a good power jack, you will you should measure proper voltage to the board. And that would verify that you do have a good jack and the board is getting power. Another great thing about this power jack lead being exposed through this back panel is that we can actually test our new power jack without having to take the laptop apart. We can just pop off the connector to the old power jack and then simply reconnect the plug with our new power jack. We'll just slide it on like so. Pop it on. And now we can even test the whole laptop itself to verify that indeed the power jack is the problem. Just flip it over. Plug our power adapter in. And when doing that, we'll see here that we immediately get light on the power jack itself. There's a, a white light that comes on and we hit the power button and we have lights. So that's one good way to test with this model laptop with a known good power jack. Before you go through the trouble of tearing it apart, you can verify that indeed it will work. So, but at this point, we're going to go ahead and just tear the laptop down to get to the power jack. We're going to take out every screw on the bottom of the laptop. There are small ones where the DVD slides in, the DVD player, optical drive, and there are ones here at the motherboard, one behind the battery slot. So once we have those out, we'll be able to kind of pop the keyboard out, flip it back, unsnap our keyboard ribbon cable, a couple of screws here to take off the the cover, we'll remove that, and then we have a ribbon cable here we'll disconnect, then we're going to go for removing the speakers, a couple screws here, three actually, we'll kind of mark one because one of them was longer than the other with an L, and this is uh, how I sort my screws, this is how I keep track of what screws go where, this is just a little, uh, little, little thing I came up with to keep myself straight, 
I just thought I'd point it out at this point. You know, I can remove the stickers, move them around. It tells me which screws go where. Kind of a good idea for you guys in case, you know, you need to keep track of what you're doing. We'll just pull out the uh, speaker cable here. And now we'll remove the speakers. Great. At this point, we're going to go ahead and remove our antenna wires that go through a feed through a hole that go to the bottom of the laptop. We'll pull those up. Remove them from their leads. We'll pull this sticker and that'll expose the, the screen cable, the data screen cable. Our display cable, we'll pull it nice and gently. And then we'll remove the two screws on the left side of the hinge here. Now there are three holes but two screws so I don't want to get confused here when I go to put it back together. So I'm going to actually mark going to actually mark those two holes with a marker just so I know that those are the two even though they got triangles next to them there but I still mark them that way just another method I have of not getting confused when I put it back together we'll take out the other two screws on the right side holding the display steadily and now we can just lift the display right off of the bottom comes right out and I also marked the right side one screw smaller than the other. So I marked it with tape. And there are the screws. We'll just put those in my trusty ice tray. This marked hinge. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep. It pays to be organized because when you put this thing back together, sometimes with different size screws, you can get in trouble. So we're just going to remove the ribbon cables that we see here that are connected to the board. There's a small one down here. There's another plug that goes to the board here. We'll remove it. And now we're going to go after the three screws that are on the back side of the lap laptop that was under the display. There's three of them. We'll pull those out. And now we're ready to try to start separating this tut the palm rest from the bottom. So we'll find you a weak spot maybe that you might be able to kind of get into and use a spudger, something plastic to kind of open things up. I found it better now to start from the back side here and just kind of crack things open. And right here at this point, I had some tension. So something isn't right. Never force it. I actually found a screw that I missed that needs to be removed. I felt the tension. I didn't force it. Don't want to break it. So we'll remove this screw and now I'm able to, to remove the palm rest from the bottom of the laptop. Got a cable there I need to get out of the way. We'll just go ahead and unplug it. I think that goes to the USBs. Move it out the way and now we can, still getting some tension somewhere though. So uh, I missed another screw. We found it right here. See, never force it. That's the one rule about laptops. Do not force it. After removing all the screws, finally, I'm able to open it up nice and easy. See how easy that came apart? If, if something is too hard to take apart, you have to force it. Something's wrong. You're missing a screw or something. So good. At this point, we have full access to our power jack. So now we'll be able to take a look at it, see how the wires are routed. And from that point, we'll uh, pull the wires out of its lead here. And it looks like we got a USB uh, PCB board that's kind of in the way. So we'll have to remove it. Looks like it's held on with one screw. So we'll go ahead and just remove that screw and see if we can move along with this power jack here take out the screw out pops the USB PCB board and now we can continue pulling our wire out pay attention to how the wire is routed it'll help you when you go to put it back together take photos if you like there's some other wires here in the way that we'll have to kinda kinda pull up and move I think what I'm's the uh, the Ethernet jack, it's pigtailed to the board too. So we'll just kind of pull it out of the way, keep working our wire back. 
getting close now to where we're getting to the jack. We'll pull the Ethernet jack out because it's in our way. And now we're able to fully remove the wire from the leads and pull our power jack out. It's kind of held into place a little bit by some brackets, but it just have to kind of move it around and pull it right out. And there's our power jack removed. Here's our new power jack. And now we are going to do everything in reverse. All right, we just snap our power jack into place here. We're going to bend our wires around, kind of get them bent and flexed so we can get them back into the same pattern they were in. And I actually used a little bit of tape to help to help mold our wire into place just to just to make sure it gets held down nice and snug into our slots. Bend the wires in to be sure everything snaps down properly. Don't forget about the PCB board that holds the the two USB jacks, but we can go ahead and put our palm rest on now. And now that I have my palm rest on, I want to test to be sure that everything is working okay power-wise before I continue to put the whole laptop back together. So we'll put the power button ribbon cable back in at this point before we go any further. We'll plug in the power adapter. We'll get it plugged in and then we'll press the power button and we have spinning fan and a light so we know we're in good shape there. Proper power is being given to the board and we can continue with the build or reassembly of everything now. Yeah, we'll just be sure we get all of our ribbon cables and plugs in the right place. You know, this is why it helps sometimes to take pictures of your laptop teardowns as you go because there are point in times where you may be a little confused about what plugs into where or what screws go into where. So, you know, if you feel a little bit uncomfortable, it doesn't take two seconds to take pictures of everything you do as you go. There's our touchpad ribbon cable there. Get that in. And then there's blue tape here where I missed a screw, so I, I was sure to mark it because I certainly wouldn't have known or may have forgotten that a screw went there. Got the three screws on the back side of the touchpad. We'll get that put on. They snap down in there good. Then we can get our display. Our display goes right into place. Once we have our display in, we can plug in our display cable and then we can also route our antenna wires back where they were. Pictures help greatly with wire management too with these laptops. Sometimes the wire management can be the toughest thing to remember. So pictures do help. We'll work that in with the spudger, get our antenna wires back where they need to be, get them fed back through the lead hole that they were in that leads down to the bottom of the laptop. A little bit tough to fool with here, but, but uh, it's kind of important that your wire management goes back as it was or sometimes your laptop won't, go, won't fit back together quite right. So you see there we have them fed back properly. That's good. Okay, our speaker assembly goes back into place, like so, another ribbon cable, and then another, then our speaker cable gets plugged back in, our screws go back into place securing that. From that point, we'll have our keyboard cover snaps back into place. It also has a couple ribbon cables also, don't forget about those and a couple screws that help secure it into place. Nice and snug. Then after that, we'll get our keyboard, get the ribbon cable plugged in for our keyboard. Make sure it seats in all the way. Snap it into place. Push it down. Very nice. Then we're going to flip the laptop over and we're just basically going to put every screw back that was that we took out originally. 
Don't forget about the little small ones that are right under where the DVD drive slides into the slot. Don't forget about those. Don't forget about the ones that you took out that were kind of the small ones that were where the motherboard is showing. There's two screws there. Just get all the screws back in. Get everything secured back into place. We get our wireless LAN, WAN card installed. Get the wires plugged into that. Then we can go ahead and work on putting our memory in. Two of them. In slots one and slot two. Pop those in. Yep. Good deal. We can put our covers on, start putting our covers back on. There, there's our DVD drive we're going to slide into place and get it put in properly. Slide it in and secure it. We're going to put our battery in. Then we're going to put the rest of our panels into place. I will put a hard drive in this machine later. I just wanted to get power to it and test BIOS and everything. Yep, once we have all our panels on, leave that one open for a second. We're going to go ahead and test out, test it out, be sure everything works good. We're going to give it power. We got a light already, and we'll hit that power button. Got a charging light, looks good. Hit that power button. And let's see what we got. Should all be well. We got lights on the button board. There you go. And we're looking for a HP post screen. And there is the post screen. Okay, everyone. Thanks for watching my video. Please rate and subscribe to my feed. I really would appreciate it. There's going to be plenty more computer repair videos coming your way. Uh, so stay tuned. Come back. When you subscribe, you'll get an email when a new video is up. I'm glad you could join me today. So until next time, everybody, see you soon.